water soluble. Water soluble, like vitamin B, vitamin C, other ones that we can take in, they only stay a short amount of time. <clears throat> the body will try to use what it's given, but it's very difficult for the body to utilize the substances that man has made. Okay? So it does get a little difficult. Now, the lipid soluble is where we can run into some issues. A, D, E, and K. Those vitamins can get stored in the fat cells. Because they'll get stored in the fat cells, if you take too much, if you get too much into your body, they will become toxic. All right? And that's not good, okay? Um, <clears throat> vitamin A, we tend to associate with vision, okay? But if we take too much of it, it can actually affect bone and muscle. Um, we can have problems with skin, hair. It can affect the liver. <clears throat> too much vitamin D, which now, vitamin D is extremely important, okay? Anybody in here ever been told they got a vitamin D deficiency? Okay, they like put you on a supplement or something. Yeah, put you one that you just kind of take over the counter or a prescription. It's prescription. Prescription. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever noticed the dosage? That's a lot. It's fifty thousand right now. Fifty thousand milligrams. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now. Vitamin D, here's the thing though, for the body to uptake calcium correctly, you need vitamin D, all right? Now here's the thing, what processes in the body use calcium? The heart, pumping up the heart, the contraction of the heart. Which is a muscle. Calcium is needed in all the muscles. Skeletal, smooth, cardiac. Calcium is needed for the one thing that we think about, bone. Okay. Calcium is needed for what else? The nervous system. Yep. It's needed for the nerves. So see, some of them are very good. All right. Right now, how do you think your level of vitamin D would be? Do you think your levels would be high or low right now? Why? Because we're inside, wearing clothes. We are inside. We're we are wearing clothes. We don't have no sunshine. Or if we have sunshine, we're stuck inside. Wait a minute. What's sunshine got to do with it? That's how that's how you're but do you really understand what that means? When they say, okay, well vitamin D three is the sunshine vitamin, but do you really understand what they're actually telling you? This, you know, side the skin actually I don't know how it, I guess it produces it. We'll break certain chemicals down to produce it. We actually need the sunshine to take it and convert it into what's going to become a hormone-like substance, and that's going to start with the skin. However, right now, we have short days. We don't have the bright sunlight. We're not out there in it. We're wrapped up in clothes, and so our body... Chances are, each one of us in here, vitamin D levels are low, okay? Now, can't even imagine what it's like for somebody that might live in Alaska where they have like the six months of the darkness or whatever. Oh, well, no, I couldn't handle that, okay? Now, the job, okay, really, it becomes important, like, you know, as things begin to warm up and you've got like maybe short sleeves on and that sort of thing, it becomes important to get the right amount of sunlight. 
So the body can make that take the it, take the materials, but you got to make sure you get it into your system too, so the body can convert it. Now, antioxidants. What does that mean? Zach? Okay. How do we know oxidation? It's told to us in the form of a free radical. It is a free oxygen molecule. It's going around, busting stuff up that it doesn't need to, and it damages the cell. And a lot of things now are given to us in that terminology. It will say this is a good antioxidant. Okay, it's a good, you know, good against free radicals, that sort of thing. Now, minerals, vitamins, for the most part, carbon based. Okay, minerals, no, they don't have to be carbon based because that's going to be something such as magnesium, zinc. All right, it's going to be another material. But we need it for metabolism, meaning proper chemical reactions. They help to establish the resting membrane potential. What is that? Because we're going to come across that again. This is your cell at rest, meaning that cell is not working. We need it to generate an action potential. This is your cell at work. The best example I can give you, muscle contraction. That's the best example. We need minerals to add strength to the bones and the teeth. For example, phosphate, calcium, okay? We need it for making buffers in the body, calcium, bicarb, that sort of thing. We need it for osmotic balance, meaning the movement of the water, either into or out of the cell. They are components of coenzymes. Love this right here. My vitamin was a coenzyme. Mineral will be a component of it. So it'll take the mineral to work on the vitamin to make the vitamin to make the enzyme work. Man. They're going to be part of our vitamins and hemoglobin. What part do they play for hemoglobin? Iron. All right. We get them from both animal and plant sources. Now, minerals, like I said, it used to be that the source for minerals was dirt going into the plant sources. But we have stripped the majority of our dirt of the minerals. And so it's, it's getting more difficult for us to have plant sources that will provide minerals to us. Once again, a lot of people tend to look to supplements for this. Take a break. Be back at 3.30.